I'm going to turn this evening to Acts chapter 2. We're going to read from verse 12 uh, down to verse 42. It's quite a long reading, uh, but it's this is God's word and we're going to read it carefully together. Then we'll pray and then we'll consider the, the three things that really come out of this uh, passage. So let's turn to Acts chapter 2 and let's read God's word uh, carefully together. Acts chapter 2 verse 12. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying to one another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words, for these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel, that shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire, and vapour of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And shall come to pass that whoever calls, whosoever shall call in the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life, and thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me speak freely, uh, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Therefore being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, it neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly, that God hath made the same Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. They said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptised every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is for you and to your children to all that are afar off even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort saying save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptised and the same day were added Unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. 
Amen. And God bless the reading of his word uh, to each one of us this evening. Let's just come before him in prayer uh, before we consider uh, God's word this evening. Let's just pray. Father, we just want to thank you for this opportunity this evening to come together, even in different places and different homes. We thank you for this opportunity uh, to bow before you together, to read your word, to pray uh, to you, to praise your name. And Father, we just thank you for each one who's gathered and we pray that you would uh, help us this evening to hear what you have to say to us. Father, we pray that we would know that you speak to us, that it's God that's speaking to each one of us through his word. And Father, we pray that you would inform our minds uh, about what is said in this passage, but we pray that you would stir our hearts and change our lives as a result of your word this evening. And Father, we just pray that you will continue to be with us, both those who hear and those who speak just now. Bless us, we pray, in our time together. We ask this in your name and for your glory alone. Amen. What does this mean? Verse 12, verse 12 of Acts chapter 2, we read uh, those words. When they were all amazed and they were in doubt, uh, saying one to another, what meaneth this? What does this mean? If we look back previously in Acts chapter 1, if you flick back a page in your Bible, can I encourage you to keep your Bible open before you uh, this evening as we go through this section. If you look back to Acts chapter 1 verse 8, to what Jesus promises the disciples previously. He said he was going back to heaven, but in verse 8 he says, You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be my witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. This is a promise of power to the disciples for what he wanted them to do, a promise to send his Holy Spirit. And eventually that promise was fulfilled. Uh, eventually it happened in all the sights and sound of Pentecost that we read there in Acts chapter 2. Let's summarise it quickly if you can scan through uh, and keep an eye on it in the passage. Uh, with the com coming of the promised Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, there was a, a sudden sound like a mighty rushing wind in verse 2. Uh, there was tongues as a fire on each of the waiting apostles. They began to speak in other languages, verse 4. And on hearing this, a large crowd gathers in verse 6. And when we get to verse 12, the start of the section we read together, uh, they are amazed uh, and perplexed. And they ask, what does this mean? And verse 14 tells us that Peter, uh, but Peter standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said, ye men of, said unto them, ye men of Judea, and all that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken uh, to my words. And Peter explains in this passage, in, in verse 12 uh, to verse 41, really, he explains what has happened at Pentecost. And uh, we see uh, here his explanation. We want to go into that uh, a little bit uh, this evening. Something we can see in, in Acts often is first there can be an, there is an event and then an explanation of uh, the event. If we could put it like this, uh, an event plus an explanation of the event equals the revelation, equals what God wants to reveal to us. Uh, we see an example previously. Again, if you flick back to chapter 1, uh, we see an example there uh, in, in chapter 1. Uh, Jesus goes to heaven and then we have, uh, that's the event, and then we have the explanation from the two men in, in white robes that Jesus will come again. Acts chapter 1 verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, verse 10, behold, two men stood by him in white apparel. Verse 11, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven 
shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go seen him go into heaven that's the event uh, plus the explanation equals the revelation and here in in acts chapter 2 verse uh, 12 to 41 we've we've previously had the explanation uh, the event and now peter brings to us the explanation of all that happened on that particular day and the author of the book of acts uh, luke uh, if we go back to his uh, first volume in Luke chapter 1 and verse 3, uh, he he gives, you don't need to look it up, uh, but Acts chapter uh, Luke chapter 1 verse 3, uh, Luke explains that he has written this account in Luke and then the second volume in Acts, uh, he has written an orderly, a careful account uh, to someone called, uh, he calls most excellent Theophilus, so that he may be certain of the things that he's been taught about uh, the Lord Jesus, and uh, that is his aim. And he wants he wants uh, Theophilus back then. Uh, Luke's desire is that he and us, the future readers of of Luke and Acts, are sure of uh, what happened at Pentecost and what it means uh, for us today. So he Luke records for us this message uh, of of the apostle peter and he uh, and he explain as he explains the day of pentecost and this sermon that peter gives in acts chapter 2 was probably uh, much longer at the time we can see there in acts chapter 2 uh, at the very end of the section we read in verse 40 uh, luke records with many other words did did he that's peter testify and exhort saying save yourself from this untoward generation and uh, you'll be glad to hear this evening we won't try to guess what the many other words that he spoke uh, about what they were but we'll stick to what's what's plain and clear here uh, in in the passage in acts chapter 2 and each point is taken uh, peter takes each point from an old testament passage to answer uh, this this question as to what uh, Pentecost means and there are three points that Peter makes and uh, I trust those will be the three points that we'll follow this evening point number one the spirit has come and point number two Jesus has risen and the third point is Jesus uh, is Lord uh, so the first point the spirit has come verse 17 to 21 Peter quotes uh, the prophecy of Joel, uh, chapter 2, verse 28 to 32. And he explains that all has happened at Pentecost is an indication that the Spirit has come as prophesied by Joel all those years ago and that they are now in the last days. Let's read just that little section together. We'll start at Acts chapter 2, uh, verse uh, 16. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show uh, wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapour of smoke. And the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord comes. And it shall come to pass that whoever shall call in the name of the Lord shall be saved. So there's Peter's explanation. He says the Holy Spirit has come. The Holy Spirit has come and we are now in the last days. Just as Joel had said in Joel's day, this message of Joel was a warning that there would be judgment if the people did not repent, if they did not turn from their sin. But Joel's message was also one of hope back then that there would be salvation. He said that everyone who calls in the name of the Lord uh, shall be saved. And something to note on prophecy in the Bible that is that is helpful. What Joel was doing back all those years before this, this time uh, in Acts, uh, Joel uh, was doing back in his time he was telling something for the people in his day 
back there and then, but it had a longer significance than just his day. And Peter is saying that the message that Joel proclaimed, the message of repentance and hope, uh, is also for uh, the future. There are lots of layers happening. I guess it's a bit like an echo. You, you ever up in a mountain range, you, you say something loudly, you hear it, and on down the valley it's heard and it's, it, it's, it's echoed on down through uh, the valley. And Peter uh, says, Peter, about the day of, of Pentecost, he says, with all of the, the sights and, the, and the, the sounds of the day of Pentecost, he says, all the signs are here to be seen and heard, including what they had just witnessed that we can read in the early parts of Acts chapter 2. He's saying, look, Joel's message from all those years ago is echoing again. Do you hear it in what you've witnessed today? Peter is saying, Joel promised the pouring out of the Holy Spirit on all flesh in the last day, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Verse 21. There is judgment to come on all who will not repent. He strikes a warning uh, note. Jesus did it. Remember in Luke chapter 13, 2 to 5, he said, But unless you repent, you too will all likewise perish. And now Peter the Apostle is striking the same warning note. The Spirit has come. Pentecost is the signal that the Holy Spirit has come. And we are in the last days. There is judgment to come for all who do not repent, for all who do not turn and change their mind, change the direction of their sinful lives. What a challenging truth this evening to let it settle in our minds and hearts. The Holy Spirit has come. We are in the last days, folks. That's a warning. And yet there's amazing hope as it begins to unfold here, that all who call in the name of the Lord will be saved and receive the Holy Spirit. This mission, this mission that Jesus has sent Peter and the other 11 who are with him here, uh, the others who have uh, gathered, this, this mission that Jesus has sent them out on is one where they won't go alone. They can't, they couldn't possibly do all that the Lord Jesus requires of them in their own strength. They need this Holy Spirit. They're witness to who Jesus is and what he's done first in nearby in Jerusalem, then further afield in Judea and Samaria, and then right around the world will need the power of the Holy Spirit. And I wonder, does it register with us this evening, believers? Does it register with you and does it register with me that we cannot do the Lord's work in our own strength? Are you dependent on God to work by his spirit, through his word? You think of your family, your your children, your church, the ministries that are that go out from there. I ask, am I aware of the Holy Spirit within? Do I show confidence in God the Spirit to do his work? My prayer, of course, in, in CEF ministry is I pray that the many workers uh, of uh, and volunteers of the 11 countries and languages in Northwest Europe, I pray that the work uh, that, 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 that we work in, uh, the languages and the countries that we work in, that they will know God's presence and, and the help of his spirit, that those uh, that they share Jesus with will realize that there is judgment coming and that they must repent, that they will call out in the name of the Lord and be saved and know that Holy Spirit's comfort and help and presence in their life too. What about your families? What about your friends? What about your work colleagues too? This is their only hope. Friends, you must warn them faithfully from the word of God. Maybe think it's difficult to bring things like this up. You know, we say maybe aren't things dark enough with all that's going on in the world and yes, that's true, but what what type of friend would you be, would I be, knowing this to be true, knowing that the, the Holy Spirit has come and we are in the last days and there's judgment coming, what sort of friends, what sort of family would I be, would you be, knowing this to be true and, and, and to stay quiet about it? 
folks, there's, there's a warning to give, but we have the greatest hope. The Holy Spirit has come and we are in the last days, but now we have the help we need. The Holy Spirit is there to help you to share both this warning and judgment to come and also to enable you to share the hope of salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ alone. Maybe for you this evening, you're listening to the sound of my voice this evening and thank you so much for joining uh, with us. And maybe for you, this is an invite that you need to hear. You personally need to call on the name of the Lord Jesus today. You need to realise, understand that there is judgment coming for all outside of Christ. And you need to understand that there's hope in him. All that's wrong here in this world will soon be wrapped up. The new creation will come. There will be judgment for the unconverted. And your only hope is to call in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You do that this evening. It's to him that Peter now turns our attention. To know the Spirit's help is is not to focus necessarily on the Spirit, but to know the Spirit's help and, and comfort and blessing in our lives is to focus on Jesus. What does this mean? The Holy Spirit has come and these are the last days. But all that has happened at Pentecost, says Peter secondly, proves that Jesus is risen. The second point Peter makes, and these last two points will be shorter than the first one, he's taking it from Psalm chapter 16, verse 8 to 11. Let's read it together again uh, in Acts chapter 2, verse 22 to 28. Ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life, thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. And here's Peter's second point in those verses. He explains this man, Jesus. This is the one who was approved by God in the many miracles that he did there. We read that in verse 22. This Jesus died as God had planned at the hands of cruel men. Verse 23. This Jesus is the God who death could not hold. In fact, death itself had to push Jesus out. The illustration I'm told is is that of an expectant mother in, in childbirth. She cannot, it comes to a point where she cannot hold the baby inside. I, I know I'm out of my depth personally uh, on this one. Uh, my wife would have more experience on that, but babies are in there. They, they seem to be in there so long. And I know in our house, uh, often our children were a number of weeks uh, late and the last few days seem to go on forever and ever but there comes a time that no matter if the mother wished to hold the baby inside she could not of course that that's true in nature uh, on the farm uh, our eldest son loves the farm and uh, with the lambs and, and with the calves uh, there comes a time there comes a time when the mother cannot hold the baby inside and the psalmist point is that God said, Peter's point from the psalmist, is that God said Jesus would not stay dead. Verse 23 and verse 24. So he did not stay dead. Therefore, what does that mean for us? Every believer 
who's united to him by faith cannot stay dead either. What a hope. In fact, it's the only hope for all who call in the name of the Lord Jesus himself. I love this story. Jesus in John chapter 11 verse 25 uh, said uh, these words. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Will you pray earnestly this evening, believer, that your own life, your family, your church, the organisations here, when things are up and running again normally, soon we hope. I would ask you to pray for CEF and Northwest Europe as an organisation that we will more and more clearly and powerfully witness to this risen Jesus in these days and that many we reach will call on this living Lord Jesus and have this hope of eternal life. I pray for some this evening again that you will realise that you will get it that if you are not by faith connected to the Lord Jesus Christ that this life that you're living now is all that there is for you. I hope that you will find in Jesus life, real life here and life beyond what there is in this earth. Life eternal. The Holy Spirit has come. We are in the last days. The Lord Jesus Christ is risen, says Peter. That's why Pentecost happened. It's proof that the Lord Jesus Christ is alive. And the last point, Acts chapter 2, verse 29 to 36. This risen and exalted Jesus is both Lord and Christ. Peter says that this risen Jesus is the only one exalted to sit at the right hand of God. And therefore, he's the only one who can send the Holy Spirit that they have seen and heard, verse 33. Peter bases this on, on Psalm 110, verse 1. Uh, and verse uh, He mentions it there in verse 34 of Acts chapter uh, 2. Let's read from verse 29 just to get... Uh, what he says around this men and brethren let me speak freely unto you of the patriarch david that he is both dead and buried and his sepulcher sepulcher is with us unto this day therefore being a prophet and knowing that god had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins according to the flesh he would raise up christ to sit on his throne he saying this before spake of the resurrection of jesus that his soul was not left in hell, neither did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we're all witnesses. Therefore, being at the right hand of God uh, exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he hath shed forth this which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into heaven, but he himself says, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thy foes, thy footstool. Therefore, because of all of this, verse 36, therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made this same Jesus, whom ye crucified, both Lord and Christ. Christ. His conclusion is that they can know for certain that this exalted Jesus is Lord and Christ from all that has happened uh, with Jesus in his life in his in death and his resurrection in his ascension to heaven and his sending the Holy Spirit on this day of Pentecost his conclusion is that the believers uh, here that these people here that he's witnessing to can know for certain that this exalted Jesus is now seated at God's right hand and he is both Lord and Christ and so therefore, he is the only rightful king, ruler and Lord. And so it makes sense that he must be the Lord and Christ of their lives. Yours and mine too. Recognising you're a sinner, as he says. One who must heed the warning he gives. One who must accept Christ's forgiveness and embrace the hope he offers. 
but also one who gives the whole of your life to serve the true Lord, who demands and deserves your service. Does your life and mine reflect that Jesus is both Lord and Christ? It should. He's the only one to ascend to God's right hand. He's the only one who has sent the Holy Spirit. So what do we do with all of this this evening? Well, what did they do on the day of Pentecost? At this final point, when Peter had finished his sermon, verse 37, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. And they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? As someone has said, they hear God and not Peter. And they ask, what, what must we do to respond? I'm going to challenge you this evening. You've heard my voice this evening, but much more importantly, have you heard the voice of God speaking this evening? This passage is the word of God. This message is, is the apostle of Christ speaking the word of God to you this evening. Do you hear God speaking by his spirit through his word? Are you pricked in your heart this evening? Ask this same question. What shall we do? And here's the answer. Verse 38. Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even to as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with other words did he testify and exhort saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received the word were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about three thousand souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. The answer this evening is to repent and to be baptized for the forgiveness of sins. And you will be, you will receive the Holy Spirit. Repent, turn from your sin. Turn away from your sin. A change of direction and be baptized for the forgiveness of sin. I want you to note something. He doesn't include to be baptized as a condition. It's not be baptized and then you become a Christian. But it's a sign of faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ that Peter has been proclaiming. They must repent from their sin. They must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ alone for salvation. And that's true all these years later. What must you do if you're hearing the voice of God? Ask that question. What must I do? The answer is still the same. Repent and believe. Acknowledge that Peter is right. These folks back then, they had to acknowledge that Peter was right about their sin. They had to turn from it. It's difficult. They had to acknowledge that they killed Jesus, some of them, and crucified him. They had to acknowledge that Peter is right about their sin and trust their whole selves to him. And they did. And verse 41 tells us many were added that day. I pray this evening that you too will repent and believe in who Jesus is and what he's done for you. Heed that warning and put your faith and trust in the one, the only hope of salvation. Call in the name of the Lord and be saved and be, be added, be added to the people of God for discipleship and for service. I love that hymn where it says, Jesus is Lord, or sin the mighty conqueror. From death he rose and all his foes shall own his name. Jesus is Lord. God sent his Holy Spirit to show by works of power that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Praise him with hallelujahs for Jesus is Lord. What do these things mean? What do all the amazing sights and sounds of Pentecost mean? The event you can read it in the early parts of Acts 2. Plus Peter's explanation is what God wants to say to them then and to us 
to you this evening. And here it is. Here at this evening, friends, the Holy Spirit has come. We are in the last days. Jesus is risen. There is hope of eternal life after this life for all who have called in the name of the Lord. Jesus is both Lord and Christ. So bow the knee, repent and believe and serve him for his glory and for his honour. Amen. Let's just pray. Our Father, we just want to thank you for this, your word. We pray that we wouldn't just hear my voice this evening, but we pray that we would hear the voice of God. We pray that we would be willing to repent of our sin. We pray that we would be willing to trust uh, and rely our l eternal life uh, in you this evening for all that you have done for us on the cross of Calvary. Father, we pray that you would help us to put our whole hope and faith in you. We thank you for the hope that there is in Jesus Christ that we call on you and be saved. And Lord, we just give you thanks for that. And we just pray that you, that would be the case for someone this evening, that they would bow the knee in repentance. They would change their direction, admit their sin, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And we pray uh, that they would continue from there to serve you. And for all of us, Believers gathered this evening, we pray that you would uh, help us to know your spirit's presence and comfort and help through your word and help us to be those who share this warning and this hope with all that we meet. So Lord, continue with us this evening. We give you thanks for this time together. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name we ask and for your glory. Amen. Amen.